should I upgrade my Dalfang antenna from this rubber ducky which came with the radio to the uh, to a high gain whip like the Blair 771 yes and let me show you why I'm about oh, probably under under 15 k's from this repeater it's, I can literally see it it's on to, to one or two hilltops over from my home kitty H anyway so, I sh so considering how far away it is, I should be able to get into it with of these. This is the stock rubber duck. A VK3 FTOM, testing access to the repeater. Nothing. No tail, no nothing. So I'll swap the antenna. And now, if now the antenna's been swapped, okay. the VK3 FTOM testing access. You can hear the tail. So that is proof. I'll, I'll go one more time. VK3 FTOM testing access. You can hear the tail. So we know for a fact that I'm getting in with that particular system. So get rid of these pieces of junk and hell it. Even go and buy one of the fake Nagoyas, because I'm telling you, there will be a lot better than this one. About the legality of the Balfang. Let me start by saying I'm not a lawyer. What I am going to say is my understanding of the law, and uh, it should not be taken as legal advice. So, please, just take this as a guide. It's not legal advice. So, my understanding of the laws around the Balfangs is they are legal as long as you lock them in chirp from 144 to 140 eight which is the uh, two meter band and from 430 to 450 which is the uh, amateur bands and you cannot use them outside of the amateur bands because they do not meet type approval so that's my understanding and let me start by saying again this is not legal advice i can't stress that hard enough this is just my understanding seven freezer cheers just wanted to add one other dis disclaimer and let me again say this isn't legal advice this is just my opinion uh you need an amateur license uh, to transmit on two meters or 70 centimeters even if the radio is locked down cheers